Hi everyone, this is Neil Reitertair, also known as the Wax Whisperer. Thank you for joining me in my latest video. We have here a patient who attends, I think every nine months, and they suffer from chronic um, otitis externa. So they have almost an eczema of the ear. And that causes this patient to turn over a lot of dead skin. Um, in cases of eczema and psoriasis, um, although the, 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 the root causes are uh, completely different, so eczema can be more linked with uh, allergic reactions, for example, whereas uh, psoriasis is um, more of an autoimmune condition. But both cause inflammation of the epidermis layer of skin. Uh, it can also cause inflammation of the, the deeper layers of skin as well, um, the dermis layer, for example, which is present in the outer third of the ear canal. So the inner two thirds, you've just got the epidermis, the outermost layer of the, the skin, whereas the, the outer third, so the outer third of the ear canal, the cartilaginous portion, you've got your three ply layer of skin, you've got your epidermis, your dermis, and your subcutaneous fatty tissue layer. And when you have inflammation of the skin, it causes uh, a proliferation of skin. So um, uh, more skin cells are, uh, are created and originated within the ear and uh, when you've got more skin cells that are, are being produced in the ear ultimately you're going to have more skin cells that shed so the root cause for this patient could be because of their kind of eczematous otitis externa they're having an increased uh, turnover of dead skin uh, in addition to that it could also be that their ear is not able to expel um, the dead skin as quickly as the ear is, is producing it. So our ears are natural conveyor belts from the centre of the eardrum. That's where all the skin cells that line the eardrum and the outer two thirds of the ear canal are created. And once the skin cells are created, they begin to migrate away centrally from the eardrum outwards in a radial fashion. So it lines the outermost layer of the eardrum, which is also three ply thick. And then these skin cells continue to migrate towards the entrance and they line the, the, um, the external superficial surface of the ear canal as well. And this migration, it could be that in this particular patient, the migration is too slow and it can't keep up with the increased rate of um, skin cells that are being produced from within the ear. And ultimately these things lead to a buildup. This patient's ear canal is also quite bendy. And when you've got dry skin, which this patient does have uh, in patches, some bits of skin work, like, so this is a bit dry and crusted, but there are other sections that are a bit softer. But when you've got dry skin, it can um, lead to more uh, friction as the skin is migrating, so that can slow down the rate. So anything that slows down the rate, you're going to get a buildup behind it. So I'm just using a combination of the Rye Correct and the ear hook initially. And I've just lifted it off the base of the ear canal. So I'm just trying to separate it at the moment. And then I'm rotating the correct inside. I've got a bit of purges. I'm slowly coming away. So part of that plug did migrate outwards. Now, once I've removed this plug, this patient has got a, a bit of, um, a lot of dry skin flakes in the ear. But again, some of it is, is it's a two, uh, it's a two consistency. Some bits of skin are really dry, but some are a bit macerated. And you, you'll see that in a moment. The maceration, so when we say maceration, the skin cells have been broken up, typically because of moisture. Um, this patient doesn't get water in the ear. So it can be as a result of the increased humidity in the ear. Once you've got a plug like this in the ear, of course, it's going to increase the temperature and you're going to get humidity created. And that can macerate some regions of the skin. So I've managed to extract that big piece. So the suction wasn't really going to do much with this. It was just a bit too dry, the, the surface of it. So you can see some of this skin is quite mushy. Some of it's quite dry. So at the top part, the, on the left-hand side of the ear canal, for example, the skin is very dry. And on the right-hand side, it's very mushy. So I'm just using uh, micro suction now. Um, now, what happened in this case, the patient, as I was suctioning, they were clinching their jaw and releasing it, which meant the ear was jerking backwards and forwards. So... Um, just ask the patient. Uh, it's, it's a complete reflex action. The patient wasn't aware that they're doing it. Um, so I think it, you'll see it better in a minute. And I, then I then ask the patient if they can, just to try and avoid um, 
the clenching and declenching of their drawer because it was making it a bit difficult. Um, easier said than done, as I said, but the patient was great, was able to do that. So I'm just trying to, what the aim is now is to peel away as much of this dead skin as possible. It's about the ear to breathe, and there's some air in there. It's been void of any air because of this blockage, just to help dry out some of this macerated skin, which is on the posterior canal wall. So this skin is quite adhesive on the canal. So the patient can hear uh, 100% now, so technically speaking, we've done our job. We've got the patient to hear, but I just want to take some preventative measures now. I wanted to remove all this. And of course, sometimes with dead skin like this, you just don't know what's lurking underneath. Um, I think if you've been following my channel for a while, and particularly in more recent cases, you'll be, it'll be evident that um, there sometimes can be, can see, be some uh, quite serious pathology that's lurking underneath the skin, and it's only once you peel it away that it's revealed. Uh, I didn't get a feeling of that in here. There's no discharge, there's no odour. Uh, but it's this part of the ear in particular, so the inferior part of the ear canal, so the floor of the ear canal, and also the posterior section, which are more prone. It can also occur at the roof of the ear canal and at the front section. But the two pathologies that um, kind of make a reference to is benign osteonecrosis, which is a decay of the bone, of the bony part of the ear canal. And that's due to a lack of blood supply. And also um, a canal cleshotoma. So that's when you get a dead skin cyst forming in the ear canal. And this dead skin cyst continues to grow and it releases enzymes, which ulcerate the skin and it can start decaying the bone as well that's the skin sitting on and quite often you see it these conditions hidden by some dead skin that's sitting on the surface but you get a yeah when you're doing the procedure itself you, you you get a feel of it so you can almost predict it here i didn't really feel that but nonetheless we want to get this out with the patient so you can see this is all the macerated skin so these skin cells are broken down and become quite mushy so to me they seem like they're overhydrated. so um i haven't uploaded it on youtube and i think <laughs> I'm, I'm contemplating whether to i generally don't because with youtube you just get abuse for uh, anything you know some people don't like anything else just apart from me away from me which i understand my channel's focus on but i was doing i've done an experiment where uh, I, I tested different types of earwax drops and uh, I was looking at the pharmacology and the efficacy of them and um, you'll see and I, if you guys follow me on Facebook and Instagram I've not uploaded it on TikTok yet but I will do later um, but Facebook I think generally speaking uh, <laughs> the viewers there are not as um, I'm not saying everyone on YouTube it's only a, a, few, a few people but it puts you off um, on Facebook it's uh, don't really get that same level of abuse um, and I'm laughing about it. So it's quite funny when people throw tantrums about me upload. If I was to upload some uh, a video about earwax drops and the efficacy, and uh, it's quite funny that some people get really, really agitated and upset. And you know, but um, yeah. So if you follow me on Facebook, if you want, guys, we'll see the video. But um, I will kind of incorporate it into some videos at the end, uh, in the next few days. But I'll, I'll kind of narrate whilst you're watching me. I'm just obviously peeling the skin. I'll, I'll kind of discuss what these drops did. So. If, I'm got, if I get this correct, I tested seven drops and I harvested earwax from three patients. Um, they're all different consistencies. You had a uh, patient one with a lot of dry skin, uh, so it's more uh, a dry matter earwax. And I had one with really, really wet wax. And I had someone in between, you're kind of more average Western type of 60% uh, dry matter wax, 40% lipids. And I amalgamated it. Um, I think in total it was like... Um, about 1.6 grams worth of wax rolled into a ball and I separated into seven segments of equal weight. So I just, obviously there's going to be some wastage there as you're breaking it up. So I got each ball into about a 0.2 uh, gram uh, ball of earwax. So I rolled it, kind of compressed it. So um, I was just trying to uh, make all of the different test conditions equal as possible. So I thought I didn't want some bit to be loose and some bit to be really tight. So I kind of rolled them all into a ball, um, equal weight, equal size. And um, I then dropped them into a measuring cup and I put different, different solutions in there. So 
Solution one was sodium bicarbonate drops, which is quite commonly used. And I normally recommend that in cases of keratosis obturans, so people with dead dermal skin plugs that form in the ear. Very con difficult condition to treat and remove uh, the dead skin. Um, so I normally recommend sodium bicarbonate for that. I then also um, use carbamide peroxide, which is urea hydrogen peroxide. The third one is docusate sodium, which is more available in the US. I find it hard to get it in the UK. And that's also used as a laxative. It reduces the surface tension of water. I will talk about the pharmacology. Uh, I've got quite a long, I've got 14 minutes. So when I reveal the results, when I go through back, of that, I'll kind of do, discuss some of the, um, the science behind these drops. So that was the third one. The fourth one was hydrogen peroxide, 3%. Um, hydrogen peroxide drops are very difficult to get now in the UK. Uh, normally you would get those, um, but now... Uh, they are urea hydrogen peroxide, so carbon peroxide. So I had to buy a big bottle of this, uh, but it was three percent, which is what the drop normal drops are. Um, so then, so I've got the four. I'm just trying to. Have I missed one? Yes. Yeah, so in between, so let's just start from there. sodium bicarbonate drops, carbon peroxide, uh, docusate sodium. Oh, then it was um, a solution called Audio, AudiClean. So AudiClean um, in the UK, I don't know if you get it elsewhere, but it's, um, it's isotonic seawater. Sea so it's got a 0.9% concentration of um, uh, sodium chloride alongside other electrolytes and minerals uh, found in seawater. And that blend, so it's isotonic, so it mimics the composition uh, in our body as well. Um, so that was the fourth one. The fifth one was hydrogen peroxide. The sixth one was um, uh, saline, um, sterile saline solution. So again, 0.9% um, saline solution, um, so that was sterile. So that differs from the AudioClean, which is seawater, but it's isotonic. Uh, this one just contains sodium chloride, so there's a slight difference. And also a difference in pH level, which was interesting. And... The last one needs is olive oil, uh, medical grade olive oil. So uh, let's talk about the results. So sodium bicarbonate drops, first of all, it's water-based. And when I measured the, um, the pH level of it, and I'm just going to get my results up on my phone because I took pictures of all of these. So let's, the pH level of sodium bicarbonate was 8.54. Now, again, there's going to be some variation here, but it's, it's alkaline. And I did that with a pH measurer. Um, and I also used litmus paper just to confirm that. So it's alkaline, it's water-based. And the science behind it is when you introduce sodium bicarbonate drops into the ear, it reacts with um, a carboxylic acid, which is typically found in sebum. So sebum is one of the three major primary ingredients of earwax. You get sebum, you get the uh, emotional oily sweat secreted by the sebaceous glands and then you obviously got dead skin. Dead skin cells also contain carboxylic acid. So when sodium bicarbonate drops reacts with that, it um, releases water, although it's already in the water solution, and also carbon dioxide to so get rid of effervescence. So the action mechanism is believed to be um, when you get the formation of carbon dioxide, you get the effervescence, the bubbling, and it that kind of breaks up the wax plug and also the water gets absorbed by the dead skin cells that form around 60% of earwax is dead skin cells, shed exfoliated dead skin cells that accumulate in the outer third of the ear canal. So these skin cells are hydrophilic, they absorb the water, they expand and swell, and then they macerate, they burst. So you're almost exploding this wax plug, that's the science behind it. Um, when I put it in, there was a bit of effervescence, but I wouldn't say a dramatic amount. Um, and I took a photo after five minutes, and it did start to break it down uh, ever so slightly. Um, the next one, as I said, was carbamide peroxide. Uh, now, that's a non-water and non-oil based, so you can't actually measure pH with that. Uh, you can only measure, you can, with pH, you can only do it with an aqueous solution. So I wasn't able to, uh, I did put it, I did use the pH measure, but I, I don't think it was accurate. Um, but from my understanding, it is more... Um, it's mildly acidic, so it's not as acidic as the natural condition of the ear, but 
it, it's it's more alkaline and uh, it's just below the neutral it's more it's not alkaline it, it's more acidic and that contains urea hydrogen peroxide so with urea hydrogen peroxide when that reacts with water the urea and hydrogen peroxide separate uh, urea is a keratinolytic so it's designed to um, help um, denature keratin so keratin is found in these dead skin cells it breaks down the keratin when it breaks down the keratin it breaks down the integrity of the wax plug um, and then it allows more water intake into the dead skin cells because keratin is a hy- is hydrophobic so when you denature that which is the urea does it just allows the skin cells to absorb even more water in theory and just and then when you get this, the, the skin cell overhydrating it macerates it it overhydrates it bursts swells breaks down at the membranes um and then obviously you then got the second reaction with hydrogen peroxide so what hydrogen peroxide does when that reacts with an enzyme secreted by the ceremonious glands which is this one of the as i said one of the three primary ingredients of earwax it's called um, peroxidase the hydrogen peroxide itself liberates into water which again can be absorbed by the dead skin cells causing them to macerate so you kind of if think about Armageddon, uh, the way they tried to destroy that was to drill a hole at the core and put an explosive and then blow it up from the middle. And that's what these water-based drops do. They want to get into the matrix of the wax plug, which is the dead skin, and then they burst it open to break up uh, the wax plug. So you get the water and then you get effervescence as well. It converts into oxygen, so you get a bubbling mechanical action similar to the carbon dioxide created by the sodium bicarbonate drops and that again that bubbling action is thought to break up wax <coughs> so that's the carbamide peroxide the third one is docusate sodium now this is an interesting one so it's also used as a, lact- a laxative uh, the ph level of that is 6.1 so it is mildly acidic um what you notice with the consistency is very water. It's more watery than water, if that makes sense. Now, water at the surface, the molecules are strongly attached together, and, we, and that creates surface tension. That's why you can get these pond skaters that can, or if you drop a leaf on the surface of water, it can float. Um, so it's just at the surface that where, when you get a difference of medium, the liquid and the air, that surface, the bonds of the water molecules are really tightly packed. So what docusate, docusate um, sodium does, it reduces the surface tension and it does it with this, <laughs> I'll quickly explain it. So one end of the docu, docusate sodium is hydrophilic, the other end is hydrophobic. The hydrophilic bit attaches to water, so this docusate sodium is attached, it's, it's water-based drops, I should have mentioned that. And because the hydrophilic parts um, are attracted into the, the, the surface of the water, it breaks the bonds between the water molecules. So as I said, at the surface, the water molecules are tightly packed together. That's what gives it a surface tension. But when you've got this docusate sodium, because it's high, one end is hydrophilic, this, it's like, think about a, a leg going into the surface of the water. It stretches the water molecules that are tightly packed together, otherwise apart. So it, it essentially reduces surface tension of water, which then allows more water to penetrate through the... The, the cracks into the wax plug to get absorbed by the skin cell so it allows a higher intake of water basically and it does that with stool so that's why it's used as a laxative and it also can stimulate the epi, um the muscles um in in, in your in your bowels and your intestines to help us extract and deposit um feces um so by allowing more water into the wax plug the theory is you're going to break it up you're going to burst it so that's how docu docu say sodium was um, um, now with the I should have just explained also what happened with the wax plug so yeah I did with the sodium bicarbonate after five minutes it did um, break up a little bit after 24 hours you could see it, it was broken down but it was kind of a thicky consistency it was very molten which is one of the issues I have with sodium bicarbonate if overused um, uh, especially with wax uh, dead skin's a different story because it has a good effect with dead skin the carbon peroxide, so the urea hydrogen peroxide, it didn't really do anything, if I'm honest. There was a bit of bubbling there, but the wax plug was still solid, so it neither did it break it down and it softened it. But if you're going to soften it, well, there's other ways you can soften a wax plug. So I wasn't keen on that. And, and I tell people not to use... I, I've said hydrogen peroxide, but it should be urea hydrogen peroxide, so there are differences there. Docus, docusate um, um, sodium... 
the consistency of the drops is really, really watery, really, really thin. So when, when I poured it into the measuring cup that I did my experiment in, I could see there was far less surface tension. And sure enough, it did break up uh, the dead skin cells. Um, the fourth one, hydrogen peroxide. Now, this is amazing. As soon as I dropped the wax plug in there, uh, hydrogen peroxide started reacting. Um, so as I said, hydrogen peroxide, azovid, carbon mide peroxide, this 3% solution, um, it reacts with peri peroxidase, which is an enzyme secreted by the sumerian glands. It releases water and oxygen. And you can see this bubbling. It was just so fascinating to see. And within 10 seconds, uh, it just exploded this. Well, not exploded the wax plug, but you can see all these bubbles. And it, it bubbles so much that the wax plug was lifted to the surface. So with the, I should just go back to the urea hydrogen peroxide, the carbamide peroxide. It was such a viscous solution that this wax plug stayed at the surface and it did throughout. So the density of the solution was greater than the density of the wax plug. Sodium bicarbonate, the wax plug dropped. Docu docusate um, sodium, it really dropped because it was no, uh, it was very little surface tension of the water. Hydrogen peroxide initially dropped and then it rose. And then the next day, 24 hours later, wow, it, it, was, it throffed. It was all over the place inside this measuring cup. And I was worried that it may even spill over. By the time I took images, the bubbles had burst, but it really did break down the skin. Um, you could see it, it was quite apparent. And it had a bleaching effect. So hydrogen peroxide can bleach. Um, it can remove uh, chromopores, I think they're called. So melanin is one of those. So it can, it can re remove this. And these pigments absorb light. And then obviously we, we see it as color. So it was very bleached, had a bleaching effect to the wax. So that was the hydrogen peroxide. The audio clean, the, the isotonic um, salt water. Yeah, it, it, it was, the surface tension of water was quite low. So the wax plug did drop in. Um, it broke it down. But let me just go back to the pH. The pH level of that was 8.14 of the, of the audio clean, the isotonic salt water. So it's alkaline, which we don't want. We want the air to be mildly acidic. The pH level of the hydrogen peroxide, because that is water-based, I could measure that, that was six. So again, it's mildly acidic. So the salt water one, yes, it did break up the wax, uh, like sodium bicarbonate. Um, it, this, the, the water in the, the, the solution uh, broke up the wax plug, uh, but it, it like sodium bicarbonate, they're both alkaline, which I'm trying to kind of avoid really because that can cause pathogenic bacteria to colonize the ear and cause an infection. Um, the saline salt water, now this is, there is recommended in the NICE guidelines, the National Institute of Clinical Excellence, which is uh, a lot of the, uh, our UK health and medical standards and protocols are uh, based on these guidelines. And they recommend, I think, sodium bicarbonate, olive oil, saline, I think they, they do mention that. Uh, I'm pretty sure they do. I've got to double check that now that I've mentioned it, but it is, it has been recommended by some ENT as well. Um, and almond oil, as I think they're recommended. Now, say, so it's a salt water solution, um, but it ha it's not isotonic. But that is really, really alkaline. Uh, it's 5.2 pH, which is similar to the pH of the natural ear. And it had the same effect as um, sodium bicarbonate, which is water-based anyway, and also the isotonic seawater. So... They all had a similar effect. They're all water-based, uh, but this is by, by far the most uh, acidic. And then last but not least, you had the olive oil drops, which, um, yeah, didn't you can't measure the pH for that because it's not aqueous, but it is mildly acidic. That didn't break up the wax, and we weren't expecting that, but it softened it. So um, now, what do I prefer? Well, with all these water-based drops, it, as I said, they all get absorbed by the dead skin cells, they're hydrophilic, they swell, they burst, they break at the membranes, they're macerated. Remember, the surface of our ear canal and eardrum is made up of dead skin cells. So what it's doing to the wax, it's also doing to the surface of your ear canal. So it's damaging the surface, the epidermal layer. A bit like all this. Now, this patient hasn't been using drops. I'm pretty sure they haven't. Well, they said they didn't. But it's in you know, the bits that are macerated. The drops have the same effect that it has on the wax plug as it does the surface of your skin, because the skin is made up of dead skin cells, the surface of the skin. That's what worries me, but with keratosis optrans, when you've got a dead skin plug, olive oil's not going to do much. It's not going to soften it. Um, so I normally used to recommend sodium bicarbonate, but I'm probably going to be more inclined now to recommend um, saline, ster sterile saline solution, because it's acidic, where sodium bicarbonate is alkaline. Um, but 
The only other problems with these drops as well, when you put them in, you're tilting your head to the side. So when it breaks up the wax, it can drizzle down towards the eardrum. And once the wax is broken up in these solutions, it become very viscous and thick in some of these. So it doesn't drizzle, it doesn't drain. So when you tilt your head the other side, it doesn't drain. So I'm going to talk about techniques to optimise this. But of course, the water problem for me is that it's going to increase the pH level of the ear, apart from the uh, saline water. But again, with all these water-based drops, they are going to macerate the skin. With olive oil, it doesn't break it down, but none of these drops is really going to drain the wax for the reasons I explained earlier, at least if it's in, in mass and you've got a lot of wax. But by softening the wax plug, it can help us remove it. And we, as I said, with the other drops, we're going to have to professionally remove it anyway. But it was an interesting study. There's a lot more to talk about it, but take care, guys. Keep well. Speak soon.